Welcome to this overview of the Euclidean Chromatican, a non-linear step sequencer driven by four identical yet independent Euclidean generators running in parallel. First, let's look at the pitch sequencer. The length of the sequence is set using the pitch sequencer step slider. Adding notes to the pitch sequencer can be done in a few different ways. As well as being played and directly using an external keyboard, they can also be recorded if being introduced as a stream of MIDI notes from a different source, such as another sequencer's output. They can be drawn in using the mouse or edited directly step by step, using the pitch sliders to set each value. Once they are there you can then edit them either independently or together as a group with the same sliders. If you want to change a few of the notes together to be set to the same pitch, you can turn on the parallel switch. Then select the ones you want to set as identical using the toggle switches directly below the sliders. Dragging any one of them will now be copied across all selected pitches. Remember to turn this off after using it as this top row of switches have multiple functions, such as adding legato and ratchets. There are also some options in the Randomize Parameters dropdown to set the entire pitch sequence either randomly, in a variety of scales, or just as a simple rising scale, again available in a variety of different tonalities. The quantizer is the last step of the processing chain, and it dictates the actual pitches that are sent out by the sequencer. Selecting and deselecting the notes of the quantizer scale will ultimately decide which notes are passed to the output of the sequencer and on into your DAW. Notes that are outside of the set pitch range are moved to the nearest pitch that will be allowed through. It won't stop pitches being heard, but will move them into the scale chosen here. The scale is set automatically if you choose a preset scale, but this can be changed at any time. You can also turn it, or any of the individual notes within it, on and off as and when required. Once the sequence of notes has been created it can then be subjected to a variety of processes, either in real time or controlled by automation during playback. To demonstrate this we will need some rhythm. You can use the internal sequencers for this or an external MIDI sequencer to drive the step sequencer by passing the internal Euclidean generators altogether. There is also an option to play a MIDI sequence you have already created or recorded elsewhere into the chromatican, and then add some of the sequencing processes to the notes of the incoming sequence. To use one of the internal generators simply select internal. This is also the default setting. Now choose one of the Euclidean sequencers to edit. All four are identical. The only thing linking them together is the basic pulse of the sequencer, which is currently set to sixteenths. They can each be set and controlled independently. This first dropdown is used to select the type of trigger that the generator emits, we're going to start with pitch and rhythm. The next selects how many sixteenths that this sequencer runs for before looping. This is essentially this Euclidean sequencer's bar length. Finally, for now, the third menu tells it how many triggers to fire off in the chosen bar length. We'll use the standard 16 pulse per bar with 4 triggers, 1 beat every bar. There are other options available. The Euclidean sequence can be reversed or inverted so that silences become triggers and triggers become silences. The whole sequence can be moved any number of steps forward. The sequencer can even play back the rhythm, whether reversed or inverted, at half speed. In fact it can do this up to 16 times half speed. Changing the number of triggers from 4 to 8 every 16 pulses results in a trigger on every half beat of a standard 4-4 bar. Back to the pitch sequencer. Let's use the major scale to demonstrate the processes that can now be used on the pitch row. We can change the way that the row is actually read or played. Forwards. Backwards. Up and down the row, bouncing off the ends. Up and down, but repeating the end notes. And a few variations using skips and jumps. We can change the size of the steps. 
This changes whether we move directly from one note up or down to the next one, or whether we skip a few notes in between steps. It can be used to produce some pretty complex patterns, some of which are recognizable traditional musical shapes. We can transpose the entire sequence by semitones, up and down, up to three octaves. Again, this is all automatable and controllable through the automation channels of your DAW. Using the quantizer is very useful here, as it keeps any processing of the original pitch row in tune. It certainly helps to make transposition like this a very simple go-to process to easily create tune harmonizations of a pitch sequence. If you click the PPV button you can switch between seeing the original notes of the sequence and notes that are actually being generated. This can be useful for setting the lowest or highest note of a transposed sequence, or for checking if a harmonization is causing clashes. The Invert Pitches button will invert the pitch row as if being reflected in a mirror. The note around which they will be reflected, or inverted, can be chosen here. Every note above the point chosen here will be reflected, or inverted, into being the same number of semitones below it as it originally was above. This turns a melody on its head, generating a new sequence, different from the original, but also closely related to it in the way that it moves. The Pitch Sequencer Range Slider is also designed to be used to move the notes originally set in the pitch row to a different, yet closely related position. This will squash the notes together, ultimately down to a single pitch. Or it can be used to expand the sequence's entire range, moving the higher notes up an octave and the lower ones down. The central note is chosen using the same slider as for the Invert Pitch button. This results in the two processes being closely related to each other, generating even more subtle variations of the original row that can be used to provide development within a piece of music over time. Clicking on the range slider with the ALT button held down will return it to the center. This works on all sliders. These basic controls can give a pitch sequence movement over time and always towards or into something that is related to the original. It might not always be what you want, but, as many have said before, it is very difficult to actually create anything at all without making choices, and choices is what this gives you. Like with the pitch row, you can use the randomize parameters drop down to randomize most of these processing options if you are stuck for inspiration. Let's find a sequence to use and move back to working with the Euclidean generators. Adding another generator means we can then use one to move along the step sequencer in one rhythm, using the pitch only option, and the other to trigger the actual notes, maybe with a different rhythm, using the rhythm only option. We can also use a different bar length to produce polyrhythms. This can generate some interesting bass and melodic lines. The other two generators can be added to crank this up further. The velocity of the notes is handled by the row of sliders at the top left of the page. It can be set to any length between 1 and 8 using the velocity sequencer step slider. This is only triggered when a note is played, whether the note itself is muted or not, so can be used to generate complex cross rhythmical accents. Each step can also be muted, which again can create some complex shifting of the rhythmic dynamic. If putting these options together seems a bit scary, you can always use the randomized parameters choices to change each section in turn. Pitch, sequencer processing, Euclidean rhythms, or you can hit select all to get a whole new idea going.
Remember to save the ones you like using your DAW's preset manager function to be able to go back and play with the best ones later. The pitch sequencer allows you to add either legato to each note individually, causing it to hold on until the next note is triggered, or a ratchet effect if using the sequencer to trigger percussion. Both of these can be assigned on a per note basis, or can be looped independently of the pitch sequencer. Like with the velocity sequencer, these loops are triggered by notes being played, and not by counting sixteenths. This means they are independent of both the rhythm generators, and of the timeline of your DAW. The kill and mute switches are tied to the pitch sequencer. Kill will effectively remove a note from the sequence, reducing the sequence length by one for each note that is selected. Mute merely switches off the velocity of the chosen note. Everything else remains in place. Because of the way that the Euclidean generators can stretch a rhythm over time there is drop-down that allows the sequence to be looped in its entirety after a set number of pulses. This causes a hard restart of the sequence, making it perfect for any music that relies on repetitious looping after 4, 8, 16 or even 32 beats. Great for any 303 style bass lines. There is one more option to look at in this introductory video. If you find a couple of sequences that you feel might work well together to create a section, or even entire piece of music, select, or load, the first, and then store it as P1. This option can be found within the Sequence Morph drop-down menu. Then load or generate the second and store this as P2. When they are loaded the P1 and P2 indicators will light up red on either end of the slider. Now you can use the Morph Sequence option. Select one of the paths available to guide the morphing process, and then just move the slider from P1 to P2. The first idea will morph progressively, and as smoothly as possible, into the second. The possibilities of this are endless. And remember, this transition can be managed precisely through automation if desired. The quantizer is not part of this morphing process, allowing it to help to draw two very different sequences together over time. That's all for this video. Thanks for taking the time to watch and listen.